Welcome to the Design Dojo Lesson 6. This is for your green belt. This is where you're going to become a color master. Uh, and there's a lot of vocabulary that's in here with color. And we'll talk more about color psychology and other stuff. I have some videos and stuff I want to show you. But let me go ahead and zoom in. And let's start down here at level 1. Uh, the idea behind this is you're going to be going through and changing some colors, being introduced to this thing called a global swatch. And then how to do shades and tints, saturated and desaturated, or what he's referring to as muted or vivid. How to do color harmonies, Pantone colors, converting colors, and then ultimately we'll see what's behind the door once you get there. So let's go back down here and start with level one. All right, so with the colors, there's a ton of stuff that we can do with color, but to begin with, let's go ahead and see where the color stuff is at. So when you go to window, you come here to color, there's color, that brings up this little selector, which you've seen before, something similar in Photoshop. But then also under window, there's color guides. It's got shades and tints, as well as these drop downs and different pieces and options over here. And then there's color themes, which will take a minute to load. This is actually connecting to what used to be called Adobe Cooler. K-U-L-E-R, uh, which has a whole bunch of really cool color themes. And then this ability to drag these around to generate your own color schemes. So you can come in and move these things around, make adjustments. And then once you're happy with the colors, you can add them to your swatches. Uh, you can also choose a color rule and you might decide, well, I want this to be complementary colors. So as you drag these around, those colors will work well together. This used to be a website, a separate website that somebody else had created called uh, that was cooler. And then Adobe bought it because it's such a great um, resource. In addition to that, if you're not, if you're not even sure where to begin with color, if you go to explore, this will connect to the online forum where a ton of people have put their own color schemes. So they've generated these color schemes and you can choose the ones that are most popular for the week. You can choose the ones that have been most used. So the ones that most people have clicked on. So you can actually save any of these color themes that other people have created. This is a great way to kind of mix things up a little bit. And if, if you find you're using the same colors, I gravitate towards using the same colors a lot of times. So I really love that resource. All right, I'm going to tuck that one in there. All right, so that's the basics of the color that's available within Illustrator. But what I want to do here is let's go ahead and let's make this right here, we're going to select it with the black arrow. And we want to change this to RGB red. So right over here, there's the swatches. The swatches is like your crayon box. So these are the ones that are set here by default. Now when I move my mouse over these, it will pop open with either the red, green, blue or CMYK percentage codes used to create that color or it will actually have a, a name. So we want to change this one to RGB red. I click there and there it goes. Now your colors may look different than the ones on my computer because each monitor displays color a bit differently. So don't worry about that. Like right now when I'm looking at this, it looks kind of orange to me and not really red, but I think that has to do with my, my monitor settings. All right, let's go ahead and go to level two. Now this one we've used in Photoshop before when I was talking about the magazine cover, but the idea is this, you select the object, you switch to your eyedropper, and anywhere else you click will automatically fill that in. So for example, if I come over here, as I'm clicking around the document, it's filling with the other colors that are in here. So what you're gonna do is just use your, you have to have the item selected first or the object selected first, then use your eyedropper and then you can switch to your regular select tool and move it. Now, sometimes it's easier to actually type in the note, the color code. So if I come over here where your foreground or your fill color is, I'm going to say foreground color a lot because it's a Photoshop thing. Double click on this and there's your color picker. Now you can see there's hue, saturation and what's known as black also referred to as value. There's red, green and blue. That's how monitors or your phone displays color, red light, green light and blue light. Or if you're printing, it's cyan ink with magenta ink, with yellow ink, with black ink. They use K for black. Uh, so with this, the hexadecimal number is a website number. It's a web code number. 
what this does is instead of going from zero to nine, it goes zero to nine and then A, B, C, D, E, and so on. So with this, it's going to be 228, the letter B, 22. Capitalization for the letters when you're using a hexadecimal number doesn't matter. So I am going to double check and make sure I have that right. A, B, 22. Then when I click away from it, see it changed color. It threw me because it was still gray. Then I'll click OK. And there it is. So when you find tutorials online, they'll oftentimes only list this as a hexadecimal number. So that's where you'll end up going. You just double click and put the number in there. You don't have to put the hashtag in. All right, let's go ahead and come up here. Now with this one, there are so many different colors that are available. Now there's this one that's called a global swatch. So notice there's this little square right in here. We don't have any that have that little square. I'm gonna show you what to do. So we're going to click here. And then in the swatches panel, you're going to, where did they move it to? Oh, wrong button. Ah, swatches. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and I'm going to do a new swatch. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that this little button right here is on, it's just gonna call global. I'm gonna click okay. What that did is see this just added that little tiny corner that's on there. Watch what this is gonna do now. So inside of here, I'm gonna click away from everything so you see nothing is selected. So right here, I'm gonna click on that to fill that in. Fill in the corner, no big deal. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to double click and I'm gonna change this to a different color. So I'm gonna switch this around and change this to a like a bright yellow. So a zero on blue, 255 on green light, and 255 on red light, and I'm gonna click OK. Notice what it just did, is it changed both of those. Since this is a global thing, the thing that's really nice is if I made one of these other colors global, what it would do is anytime I change the color, it'll change everywhere that that color was used in this single document. It's really super useful. You don't fully get global color, I get that. I will show you a video on it later to show you how practical that is. Or I'll use something that I've created, like maybe one of these things here. I made a sticker for my uh, wife. Uh, she loves puffins, so I drew this out in an illustrator and then this little dog character that she made. So I created that in Illustrator. Um, okay, so let's go here. What we're going to do is we are going to create tints and shades of this. A tint is when you add white to a color. A shade is when you add black to a color. So what we're going to do here is we are going to tint this by clicking here. Come on. There we go. So when I choose these colors, it's just whatever color is existing, which is not what I want to do. So give me a second. Let me undo. All right, there we go. So you'll see here, if you have this color selected, this is giving me a color scheme generator, which we're going to get into in just a moment. I realized I jumped the gun a little bit. But say this color was purple. When you add black to it, it gets darker. When you add white to it, it gets lighter. Let me show you in the color picker how you can manually do this. Right here, you can double click. I'm gonna apply that color. So I'm gonna eyedropper that one. I'm gonna click on this one. I'm gonna eyedropper this one. But then on this particular one right here, I'm gonna double click on the color picker. And there's a couple ways to do it. The way the color picker is set up is when you move down, it's adding black to the color. When you move to, actually, when you're kind of going in the an angle down, that's adding black. When you're going here, it's adding a tint. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click on it and I'm gonna start to drag down somewhere about there. And now that's a tinted version of it or a shade of that. Now I'm gonna come to this one, double click, and I'm gonna move it closer up to there and that is a tint of it. So basically what we do is a shade is when you add black, 
a tint is in when you add white. And the way to do it starts with the, the main color going down, adds a creates a shade, moving towards the corner over here, we'll make it a tint. We're gonna do the same thing here to make them saturated versus desaturated. So I'm gonna take the eyedropper, grab that color. I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna grab that. Okay, so a saturated color, what they're calling a vivid color is one that's a little bit more neon. It has more of the color in there. So I'm gonna to come to the color picker. When you move to the right, that is adding more of the color. So there's the original, that's one that's more vivid or more saturated. And I click okay, and that has more of a saturation than this color. For this one, instead of moving up and down, because up is where it's gonna create a tint, down is going to do a shade, to the left, it's going to desaturate or mute the color a little bit more to the point where it'll eventually turn gray. So it is something like that. So the way for the most part for shades, you move down to make it darker or a shade, you move up for a tint, and then you can desaturate or mute a color by moving to the left, and you can make it more vivid or saturated by moving it to the right. So that is how this color picker works as far as how the colors are generated. All right, let's go ahead and create a harmony based on this one. So you're gonna learn a lot more about color theory uh, as we go along with uh, complementary colors, triads, analogous colors, and things like that. But we're gonna start by doing this. We're gonna create a three color harmony based off of this starting color. That's where I jumped the gun a minute ago and went to the color guides. So right here, what I wanna do is I want to find some colors that match up with this one. So I'm gonna click here. Come on, I want that one as my setting point. So I'm gonna set the base color as my starting point. Give me a hard time telling the difference between this. Give me a second. I just double click by mistake and so it grayed everything out. If that happens to you, just click that little arrow right there and it'll bring you back. That's putting it into something called isolation mode. There we go. So now I'm gonna choose triad. So those are the colors that will work with the triad. So I'm gonna add those to my swatch. All right. So now my swatches, there's the three colors. So now to make my harmony, I'm gonna click on that first one, apply it, click on my second one, apply it, click on my third one, and apply it. If I wanted to do other kinds of harmonies, I would just come back to it, choose my color guide, and decide I don't want that as my starting color, I want that one as my starting color. And now I'm gonna go to Complementary colors, awesome, I can use those and I can add those to my swatches and then they would be available. So those are ways to be able to generate color schemes. All right, let's move up just a little bit more. What we're gonna do is there's a thing with printing, like Coca-Cola has its own unique red that they use in their logo that needs to be exactly the same no matter what country it's being printed in. Same thing with Starbucks color, they're green that they use. They have a specific color that's called a Pantone color. What that is is a special ink that's un a unique blend specifically for them. Right now, these process colors where you process just light, 22, the red, green, and blue, or you, pro or you do process for printing, that's not gonna give you an exact color every single time but a Pantone color will. It's a unique custom ink that's used. Now, in order to convert this, what you're going to do is you are going to come in and inside of here, there are other swatch libraries. So inside of here, there are, where are the Pantone libraries now? Oh, I don't wanna do that. A second to fumble around here and see where they moved it in this version. 
uh, your stuff is going to be slightly different. You know what? Let's skip this one for now. Since we're not going to be printing yet, uh, hopefully we'll be back at school. But since we're not printing, we're going to skip that one. So don't worry about nine for now. Let's go ahead and do these last two. So what we're going to do is we're going to edit these colors. So there's ways to do colors automatically and make changes. So what we can do is if you go to edit, actually, let me revise that, highlight this first. So I just use my black arrow and drag across the whole thing. Edit, edit colors, and I'm going to do convert to grayscale. And it automatically converts that to grayscale. Kind of a cool little thing. And last part, let's go to your layers. So I select the doors, I go to the layers, I turn it off. And now what you're going to do is you're going to recolorize this to match this. So what you're going to need to do is take this and ungroup it. And then now go in, select the different objects that are in there and use whatever method you think you need to use to be able to create that. Hint, use your eyedropper. All right, and then once you're done with that, just make sure when you save, you, after that's completed, save this. Let me save it to my desktop. You're gonna be saving it to your Google Drive. You wanna make sure this has to be Illustrator CC not 2020, not 2021, but it should be Illustrator CC and it'll have parentheses on yours and it may say legacy. Save it as that so you don't lose points and I can actually open the file. All right, good luck with the recolorization of that one. And once it's done, go ahead and turn it in.